Well, hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Miss Crochet and Coffee here. And today we are doing a whipping chat. So get out whatever it is you're working on and work along with me. I am still working on my canvas from the Cheryl Burke collection. I'm not even going to try to pronounce the name because I know I will butcher it. So I hope you're all doing well. I was asked by a subscriber, Jasmine J, to do a whipping chat where I answered diamond painting questions while I diamond painted. So I decided to ask you guys on Friday that I would put a post up in the on the community tab and have you guys ask me questions so I went ahead and pulled that up and we're going to get started working on our canvas here um, also for the rainbow pen great uh, thank you to Elizabeth and Edward it is a great pen I absolutely love it um, she did post a couple of them up for sale but of course just as quickly as she posted them they were sold out so if you would like to get your hands on one of these elusive pens you're going to have to follow her over on Etsy to follow her shop to see when she's going to have more rainbow pins available so let's get started with this tag shall we now the first one is a multi-question comment from kb photography um kb photography has i think she has like five or six questions in this one post so let's try to break this down the first one she asks is how often do i spill my drills uh probably every third canvas i don't usually spill my drills in, unless I'm like super tired and I'm still trying to diamond paint. Usually if I'm not super tired, I don't usually tend to spill them. Usually it's something like the kids will come up and spill them or the dog will whack it off the table. But for the most part, I'm not big on like, I, I'm not prone to spilling my drills. Um, her next question is, if you could have a diamond painting company, what would you name it? I wouldn't have a diamond painting company. I have no interest in owning a diamond painting company or doing anything besides diamond painting. I, I'm not that into it that I would be like oh I need a diamond paint now that's I'll leave that to the other diamond painting people but if I just have to have a diamond painting company it'd probably be something stupid like just another diamond painting company I don't know I again I'm not I have no interest at all in having a diamond painting company or designing images which I'm pretty sure is her next question and it is if you could create your own design what would you what would you create your own design what would you name the design and how many colors would it have I don't know. I'm not, I'm not into diamond painting like that. Like a lot of people are where they want to design their own kit and all that. I'm not into that at all. It'd probably be like a rainbow or a unicorn dabbing and I'd call it dabbing unicorn. It'd be something like that. But I have no interest at all in owning a company or designing canvases. It's one of the reasons why I also don't buy customs because I'm just not into it like that. So like Diamond painting for me is just therapy. It's not like work. And the moment, I don't know about anybody else, but the moment you make something work, it's not fun anymore. It's just not fun. So I wouldn't be interested in buying a diamond painting company or owning one or creating one or creating designs because it's just not my gig. So thank you, KB Photography, for for submitting your questions. Um, the next one comes from Connie. We're going to, she goes, she, bleh, if I can talk. Connie P. asks, on average, how long do you spend working on a diamond painting a week? Um, that depends. If I have a week where the kids aren't super needy of mommy, then I could spend anywhere from 40 to 50 hours a week on a diamond painting because I usually will get up early and stay up late to work on a diamond painting. So uh, probably between 40 to 50 hours of diamond painting a week. If I'm into the design like that, uh, this design here, the only reason why I haven't gotten much further than I was on Friday was because of the fact that I'm trying to get things ready for the Etsy shop. Um, so I haven't been working on it as I usually would because you guys would have, if you guys know, if I was working on this full time, 24 seven, giving it my full attention, I would have been a lot further than this, but I'm not giving it my full attention. So uh, you probably will see me working on this for a while uh, just because I'm trying to get stuff ready for the Etsy shop. So yeah. So then she asked, Connie, is the same person. And in addition, how much time do you spend making videos? Too much time, too much time, too much time. YouTube is a job for me. It's not, it, it, it's fun at first and then it turns into a job, which like I said in my last statement, it gets to be not fun when it turns into work. Um, I absolutely love making videos. Like this is like my job because on top of like, being a stay-at-home mom, it gives me purpose. It gives me something to do so that I'm not bored. This type of work, I don't mind doing because I should, essentially I'm helping others find the joy in this craft. So uh, this type of work, I don't mind doing, and it is still fun for me. As for recording, 
on average a week, I probably spent, and if that's just recording, just recording itself, probably six hours a week. Editing, another six hours. Uploading and adding all the stuff that uh, goes into the video and the description box and everything, I'm going to add another two hours. So this is literally like a job. And I know a lot of people create channels thinking it's not going to be any, it's not going to be hard and they can get immediately monetized and, you know, it'll all be peaches and cream. It's not that way. And then they end up quitting their channel because they realize they A, don't have the following that they thought they would have or B, they didn't blow up overnight. So uh, I usually tell people, you know, this is a job. It's a lot of work to do YouTube channels. You have to have a tough skin because you're going to have... Lots of people coming at you from different directions, people that think they know better than you, people that swear that you're doing something wrong and, you know, they want to tell you how you're supposed to do things, even though they don't have a channel. Like, it's just a, it's a job and you have to prepare yourself mentally and physically for this job because just like any other job, you will be judged, you will be criticized, you will somehow get roped in the drama, what have you. Like, it's, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work and I usually try to even it out and do it so that I'm not interrupting my family time. But sometimes it will flood into family time and that's when it gets to be not fun anymore. So yeah. Um, and she says, I love your videos and your Friday lives. Thank you for everything you do. Oh, you're welcome, Connie. Thank you so much for submitting a question. Now the next question comes from Cheryl and she goes, how do you load a pen with glue dots? I know you don't use the glue dots. Then if, then if I don't use them, how would I know? But if you did, how would you load it into it? I have no clue. I have never even heard of glue dots. Well, I've heard of them. I've never used them. I've never seen them. I would have no idea how to load that into a pen. You might want to go talk to Rachel about that one. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? Um, What do you... When you guys ask these questions, you gotta kind of specify because I don't know if you mean like where you see me at on YouTube. Because in YouTube, in, in ten years, I don't see myself being on YouTube. If that's what you mean, like I, no, uh, my kids are growing up fast, and my career on YouTube is not gonna last forever. And I know that, and I don't want to be a YouTuber that's on YouTube for fifteen, twenty years. Um, where I do love doing my channel, at some point, it's gonna become not fun for me, and I'll get bored with it, and then I'll probably just stop. Um, I'm not sure when that will be, but I definitely in 10 years, I won't be on YouTube. So, uh, I don't know where I'll see myself in 10 years, probably sitting somewhere crafting on something. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I, I, I don't know what the future will hold because I never, you never know because things constantly change. Just like at the beginning when I first started my channel, I said that I, <laughs> I was like everybody else. I'm like, I'm not going to buy a painting until I finish a painting. That's hilarious. Cause yeah, no, uh, you can't help but buy the paintings, especially when you see a sale or something new comes out. Yet, yeah, no. Uh, but things are constantly changing. But I honestly don't see myself on YouTube for 10 years. I honestly, I, I change doing things that I do a lot. So probably, I probably have another two or three years on YouTube and then I'll probably call it quits, to be honest. Just because I don't, I don't feel like I need to spend the rest of my life on YouTube. And so in 10 years, I honestly, I don't know where I would see myself because at that time, let's see, Orion will be 19, Maggie will be 17, turning 18, Minna will be, oh my gosh, Minna will be 24, no, yeah, 24, my kids will be older and yeah, like I think I would just be enjoying, uh, watching my children get older and seeing what they do with their lives and helping them get their start in life. Um, but honestly, at that time, like, I don't think I'll be on YouTube. I mean, even now, uh, being on YouTube with the kids, it's a little bit difficult because I have to find, I have to balance taking care of my kids and being a good mom and being on YouTube. And I'm learning very quickly that you can't do the two very easily because I can ask all day for people to not disturb me while I'm trying to do stuff with my family. And I will still get questions from people like, what's your favorite diamond painting? How many diamond paintings have you completed? Uh, like, I, no matter what I do, there's always YouTube something related happening. So I, I would definitely say in 10 years, I probably won't be on YouTube. I'd probably be trying to live like a normal, like mommy life with the kids and just helping them 
you know, become adults and spread their wings and fly out of my house. So, yeah, uh, I don't know. I, I see myself doing something else that's not YouTube. <laughs> that was a very long, drawn-out question. I'm sorry. Um, she also asked, how and when did you meet Mr. Coffee, and how did you how did he propose to you? All right, so I know people think that there's this long, drawn-out romantic story between Mr. Coffee and I, and there is not. Um, Mr. Coffee, I don't really want to say he, he, I don't think he actually really like got down on one knee and proposed. He did ask my dad's permission to marry me. Um, he also talked to my grandmother, and my grandmother was like, "Do you love him?" Yep. Okay, then. Uh, my grandma's real religious, and I guess my dad called my grandma to have her talk to me to make sure that this is something I wanted to do. Um, but I met Mr. Coffee, I don't know, 15 years ago. And we were friends, and he was dating somebody else. And when they split up, me and him got together. And one day we were laying in bed, and he had asked, you know, hey, we should get married. And I was like, really? Why? And he's like, I don't know. Why wait? I'm like, what do you mean, why wait? He goes, I know I want to spend the rest of my life with you, so why wait? So we went to the courthouse a month later and got married. The end. Like, it, it literally is nothing romantic. Like, uh, I actually met Mr. Coffee from a mutual friend. And uh, I w we went to a party at his house or, like, a little get-together at his house. And I met Mr. Coffee there. And at the time, like I said, Mr. Coffee had a girlfriend. And uh, after that party or whatever is when I we we like we of course kept in touch and then he broke up with the girl and him and I got together so yeah like it's not like anything real romantic or anything but we we met through a mutual friend and then we started talking as friends and then we decided to date and then we decided to get married we started dating July 26th of 20 what was it 06 of, let's see, Orion's birthday is 2 11, 11. So we started dating in 09. And then we started dating in July of, July 26th of 09. And then by October 26th of 09, we were married. And then we spent a year without children. And then we had Orion and, or yeah, then we had Orion and then we had Maggie. And of course I had already had Minna. So yeah, that, that's the story between Mr., me and Mr. Coffee. Like, it's not anything like romantic, like, oh my God, he swept her off her feet. No, it was just, you know, I split up with Minna's dad and he split up with his girlfriend and we decided to date and then we decided to get married. Happy endings. Cheers. <laughs> and it's funny because that's a big question I get asked all the time on the channel is how did I meet Mr. Coffee? And I'm like, literally met him through a friend. It wasn't anything kind of romantic or, you know, I seen him across the room at the bar and I was just like, oh, that's a handsome guy. Nope. Literally just met him at a friend's house. I went to a friend's house to go hang out with them and Jordan was there and I was just like, hey, he's cute. And then we started dating. The end. Sorry. <laughs> it's it's just a weird question to get asked. Like I literally get asked that question every freaking day. I don't know why it's so fascinating or what that has to do with my channel, but apparently you guys love hearing how I met Mr. Coffee. So, uh... So that answers that question. So how? I met him through a mutual friend. When? Uh, no. I met him. Oh. Yeah. No, I met him in 08. So it can't be 15 years. I met him in 08. And we started dating in 09. And then got married in 09. And yeah, it's just been us ever since. Uh, and his proposal, it was just pretty much us laying in bed and him going, Hey, you want to get married? Okay. Why? When do you want to get married? And he's like, I don't know. How about in a couple of months? A couple of months? Why Why? Why so quickly? Why wait? Okie dokie. So that, that's literally about it. Um, and she says, out of all your Diamond Art Club paintings, which one is your favorite? Was it the Heroes of Symbolism, White Tiger, any other one? Well, neither one of those were my favorite. Um, out of my Diamond Art Clubs, there's two that I would have to say are my favorite. Um, one would be uh, K. Rico Siren. It was just a very, very big painting, a very enjoyable painting, probably one of the, it was the largest painting I have worked on to date, um, it was just a very nice canvas to work on, the other one would be Free Like a Bird from JoJo's Arts and Diamond Art Club, because that painting just was beautiful and symbolized something that just meant a lot to me, so those two canvases, I would have to say, are my favorite Diamond Art Clubs, 
So thank you so much, Cheryl. I love your YouTube channel, by the way. Oh, thank you, Cheryl. So thank you for submitting your question. So our next question comes from Emma. She says, if you could create a diamond painting, what would you choose to be the design? Y'all, look, listen, I'm not into diamond painting. Like, <laughs> I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think about these things. This isn't something that's on my brain. Like I want to design a diamond painting. Like it's not anywhere near my scope of, I don't know. I don't know how to say that. I, I don't have any interest in designing a diamond painting. Um, but to answer the question, she asked, if you could create a diamond painting, what would you choose to be the design? Also, how do you find out about diamond painting? I wouldn't choose a design. I'm just going to say it like that. I, I wouldn't choose a design because I have no interest in creating a diamond painting at all. I don't even buy customs because of that fact. No. Um, so if I honestly, you know what? If I had to create a design, I wouldn't create one myself. I would ask an artist that I know, Amy Boz, if we could use her images for artwork because I like gothic art. And so, like, where I do like rainbows and unicorns and all that fun stuff, I also do like gothic art. There also is that dark side to me. And she creates a lot of beautiful gothic art that I enjoy. So I would probably ask her if we could use her designs. Boom. I don't design anything. No, that's just not my gig. How did you find out about diamond painting? Uh, let's see. Diamond painting was something I found out about through Facebook. Uh, I had never heard of diamond painting before. I, of course, was a crocheter, which, by the way, probably in the next couple of weeks, you'll probably see the name of the channel change if you haven't already seen it. Um, don't worry. I'm still going to be Miss Coffee. It's just going to be crafting with Miss Coffee because my name is long. So I'm probably going to knock off the crochet part because I get a lot of people that ask me about the crocheting and I'm like, eh. So we're going to probably knock it down from Miss Crochet and Coffee to just Miss Coffee because that's what normally what everybody calls me anyways. Um, but yeah, uh, I found out about diamond painting on Facebook. I was scrolling through one day and there was an ad for Jolly Life off of Amazon for a diamond painting of a fairy, which is the fairy that if you've ever seen my face sitting on the couch um, or if you watch the Cheryl Burke video, you will see my face, and in that video, uh, right behind me is a picture of a, a diamond painting of a fairy. That is the very first canvas I ever completed, and it was from Jolly Life off Amazon. It was horrible, but I completed it because I didn't know any better, so yeah. Um, I found out through an ad on Facebook. They had all those ads, and they were just like, try this new amazing craft, even though it had been around for like, I don't know, seven or eight years when I started, so I decided to give it a try. So that was my first one. Diamond Art Club was actually my third canvas because I bought one of their, well, I got one of their free canvases. You just pay shipping. I was the Four Seasons tree, and then I was hooked ever since. So, yeah. So thank you, Emma, for submitting your question. So the next question goes to Kristen. Kristen asks, hey, Miss Coffee. Hey. I'm 23 years old, mom with four, a four-year-old, a two-year-old, and a one-year-old. May the caffeine be with you, sister. She says, how do you, how are you able to diamond paint with your kids being young and wanting your attention? My kids aren't that young. They're nine, seven, and 14. The 14 year old doesn't even really live here. She lives in Pennsylvania. Um, between the nine year old and the seven year old, the nine year old sits in his room until we con him, like we, we pry him out of there with food. Like we get to bribe him to come out with food. Um, or unless we're doing something like as a family going somewhere. Uh, the biggest one is Maggie and I don't. So when I diamond paint, I usually will not diamond paint during the day unless I'm doing a video uh, because of the fact that Maggie is so much into spending time with mommy that I would never get anything done. So uh, when it comes to doing videos and stuff like that, I can get her to be quiet long enough to do that because I will con Orion again with food to keep an eye on her while I make videos. And she understands that mommy has to make her videos, so she will give me that time. But... Uh, hold on, I need X. Here's X. And then eight. But she, she will be respectful enough to give me time to make videos, but I usually will diamond paint. And even before I started diamond painting and I was crocheting and the kids were actually little, I would wait till they were asleep. Uh, I don't require much sleep and I know one of the big keys of, you know, trying not to wear yourself out with your kids when they're that small is to, to sleep when they sleep. But 
I would craft when they were sleeping because it was the only time I have peace, which is another reason why I'm usually up late at night is because it's the only time I have to myself to diamond paint. Um, so I usually wait until they are asleep to diamond paint. And if your kids are small enough to take naps during their nap time, sleep. The mess, I, I had, it took me a long time to learn this, this little rule. And it's still, you know, every once in a while, I still don't follow it. But the mess that is, it, that is your house will be there when you're, when your kids wake up. It's not going anywhere. And if it was, I'm pretty sure you wouldn't mind your mess going anywhere. So if you are one of the parents that likes to clean up while your kids are sleeping, uh, take maybe once or twice a week where you don't clean up when they're sleeping and, uh, diamond paint. That's really like it. Like I, my kids are so used to me, you know, doing something all the time that they, they don't really bother me too much when I'm diamond painting. Like I could diamond paint during the day if I wanted to, but it would literally be constant starting and stopping. And I don't like that. I get so irritated when I get interrupted. So I wait until they go to sleep because it makes no sense to get upset with them, uh, for interrupting me when they just want their mommy. So, uh, I wait till they go to sleep and then I go like game busters on my canvas. So yes, Kristen also ask, um, uh, kids being so attention. My kids won't leave me alone and always need my attention. LOL. I have been diamond painting for two years now and it's getting harder to have me time. Yeah, definitely. My me time comes after they go to bed. If they're in bed, that means that they won't bother me. But then again, you have that you have to worry about if your kids are the type of kids that are never so thirsty as they are as when you tell them to go to bed. Uh, I can tell my kids to go to bed and they don't get out of bed after that. Like I've I've known people that have you know they they tell their kids to go to bed and their kids are like, it's playtime. What we haven't played nicely all day, but we're gonna play so nice together now at bedtime. Yay. Yeah, my kids aren't like that. They they have their own rooms, and I'm like, go to sleep. And they can just go in there and go to sleep. Every once in a while, Maggie will test your patience and make you come in there. But for the most part, I wait till they go to sleep. And then I'm like, all right, it's me time. Um, it is hard to get me time when you have little kids. It is hard to do a YouTube channel when you have little kids because I work on what I like to call baby time. Baby time is essentially a term we used in photography. Uh, you're at the mercy of whatever your children need and or have to have done. So we call it baby time. Um, I don't work on my own schedule. I work around my kids' schedule. So if my kids need their mommy for something, I have to work around their schedule because their needs come before anything else. So my me time comes early in the morning before they get out of bed. Like I get into a routine where I will get up at say eight o'clock instead of 11. Yeah, that's a big difference there. Now it's summertime now because the, the, during the summer, the kids sleep in. So I will get up at say eight o'clock. I'll record videos. I will do what I need to do around the house. And then I, by the time they wake up, I'm already done or I've had enough of diamond painting for the day. Um, and then when they go to bed, I'm like, all right, game busters time. And then I go game busters on my canvas. And then uh, usually I'm out here by myself because Mr. Coffee's schedule, uh, if he works the morning shift like he does now, he's he has to be up at like three o'clock to get ready for work. So uh I'm usually out here by myself and I'll put on something on TV and I will not even pay any attention to it, but I'll put it on just to have noise in the background and I'll diamond paint. So it's hard to find that me time, but you have to find it. You have to get it in where you can fit it in. So I'm just, yeah. So with that, thank you so much, Kristen, for your question. The next one comes from Diamond Painting Fanatics. Miss um, Coffee, the legend. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you for teaching me how to multiplay spin a godsend and now I'm halfway through a huge 100 by 80 good god with straight lines however what's the best wax you recommend please standard pink wax or there is there a better one okay now the wax debate is always a debate now I don't I haven't done any like wax battles like Rachel Ray has Rachel Ray has more patience for that than I do uh me personally uh when it comes to wax oh there's a diamond still stuck on my pen I need to find that symbol when it comes to wax, I use two different types of wax. I use patty wax, SS. I'm not the biggest fan of the patty wax, like the regular patty wax. It, it's nice. It smells good. But uh, I would rather the SS because, uh, it one, it doesn't have a scent. And my dogs aren't attracted to it. Two, it works a lot better because it will take your canvas, your firstborn child, and a blood sample all at the same time. So I really like the patty wax SS. I also like 
if I, have, if I had to get regular wax, the blue wax works the best out of all of them, in my opinion. Um, I also like Nacho Mama's Mud. I think Beth Minton is on a break right now from her shop because she just had some surgeries on her arm and her, her hand. But uh, Nacho Mama's Mud is also a really good product for people that are looking for good alternative wax. I also was just recently introduced to uh, Caro Wax, which it is a lot like Patty Wax, but... Uh, it's a different company, obviously. Um, and with the patty wax, like, I don't mind patty wax for, for the most part. Like, I still will use it. But it leaves a lot of residue on my drills because I'm a heavy, I press down heavy. And that's another reason why I like the SS is because it doesn't leave the residue on my drills like the patty wax does for me. Because, again, I press down heavy. So, waxes, I would say either get yourself some blue wax. Make sure your pen is packed very nicely. It's packed nice and tight. So, the blue wax... Or the white wax is also really good if you're looking for like an out source of wax. Uh, Caro wax and patty wax. Patty wax is a lot harder to come by. Caro wax is something that uh, is easier to come by because she makes it in different shapes, scents, sizes, and all that fun stuff. Um, patty wax is like the elusive albino peacock. It's hard to find and when you do get it, uh, when you do find it, you got to be quick to move to get it because she sells out very quickly because it is such a popular product. Great. Robin over at Distracted by Diamonds does an amazing job of uh, selling her wax and, you know, balancing life and wax and everything. So, yeah, like, my favorite waxes are going to be Patty Wax, Carol Wax. Uh, I even like the Pretty Placers, which are just a wax crayons, which is great for uh, if you have special drill projects. And I also like the Blue Wax for regular wax. So, there you go. Thank you so much, Diamond Paint Fanatics, for your question. Our next, we're getting through these pretty quick. Our next question, oh, hold on, it says read more. Oh, Cindy. Thank you, Cindy. All right, so the next question comes to us from CP Diamond Paints. What is your favorite diamond painting that you have done? Also, how would you recommend to shake the tray if you have only one hand and limited motion in your wrist? Okay. Um, well, that one's going to be a hard one to answer because I don't have limited motion in my wrist or anything, and I don't have just one hand. Um, but I could try something here for you here in a few minutes, but favorite diamond painting I've completed, like I said before, it's going to be, uh, either K Rico Siren or it's going to be JoJo's Arts, uh, which K Rico Siren, for those of you who don't know, is a Mandy Manzano and then, uh, Free Like a Bird is JoJo's Arts, both from Diamond Art Club. They were both my favorites, but if you only had one hand and limited wrist motion, all right. So let's just mix, let's mess them up in the tray here. We're just gonna push them all down and we're gonna mess them up and try not to spill any. <laughs> all right, so I would recommend tilting your tray and shaking them. So you just tilt, okay, so if you can see, you're just tilting it up a little bit, okay? And then you just shake back and forth lightly. And you're not having to really move your wrist as long as you can move your arm side to side you don't have to move your wrist. And then for all the diamonds to go down to the bottom, you just tilt it down a little bit. Boom. Straight drills in your tray. And if you're worried about the drills coming out, that's why I hold it like this. My finger is covering the spout, and so is the thumb covering on the inside there. Um, so, yeah, that's how I would shake my drill tray. So, hopefully that was helpful to you. Thank you so much, CP Diamond Paints, for your question. The next one comes from Kylie Gray. What you look at. I'm just a dog trying to keep his. Oh, she. I think she's commenting on the picture. The picture of the from the post of the on the community wall. It's Killian sitting on. He loves the Mandy Manzano pillow I got from her website. Killian loves that sugar plum fairy pillow. And whenever Mena leaves it on the couch, he if even if she doesn't, he will go get it and lay on it on the couch. He absolutely loves that pillow. Uh, he and it's one of the few things that I've purchased that he won't like. Anything like a dog bed or whatever, he will tear up. But the pillow, he won't tear it up. He just likes to lay on it. I think he just really likes the pillow. So I might end up having to buy another Mandy Manzano pillow, which how awesome would it be if she made doggy beds? That would be awesome because if he likes the pillow, then he might like a doggy bed. But he just got a new doggy bed. Don't worry about it. So, uh, she says the dog is the cutest thing. Killian is a very cute dog. He's a very derpy dog, but he's very cute. So thank you, uh... <laughs> Thank you, Kylie, for your your question or your statement. 
Jenny asks, what is your favorite DP pen? Uh, right now at this current time, it would have to be a toss up between these two. So this one's the one I got from Harp's Custom Creations over on Etsy. And then this, of course, is from Enablers Outpost. Uh, I do have Bootleg Betty and Girthy Gertie, which are also some of my favorites. But my all-time favorite pen out of all the ones I have has to be the big fat chunker rainbow one. Because how cool is that? The only thing that would make it better if it had glitter on the inside of it, so it glittered as well. Or I wonder if they can put like AB drills inside the resin when they do this. I'm not sure if that's a thing, but it'd be really cool if they could. Um... And again, here we go with the tray. So we're going to shake it back and forth evenly and then tilt it to the side. Boom. Uh, so what is the number one tip you would give to a newbie who has been diamond painting for two months? P.S. The newbie is me. <laughs> well, welcome to the craft, Jenny. Uh, tips for newbies. Get yourself some cover minders. This is, there, there's going to be, I'm going to do like five tips. Tip one, get yourself some cover minders. Uh, cover minders are magnets, and I'll show you one here. They're usually decorative magnets like this, and they hold your cover paper up or down on your project. So say if I'm, I'm done with my project and I still have some of this space left open, I would float, fold it down and use the magnet here. And this is one I got from T-Maw over at DP with Sparklers. Um, I would keep the magnet on it to keep the paper down to keep it from getting on any dog fur or anything on it uh, or you know, and they come in all different types of shapes of, you know, things you can get, you can get little characters, uh, what have you, whatever your heart content is to get, but, uh, get yourself a good cover minder. Uh, I would say get yourself a good pen because when you're new to a craft, if you're anything like me and you're new to a craft, you go all in. Now, when I went start diamond painting, I went all in and, I bought all the things. That is not necessary at all. Um, watch a few videos, and I know you're excited to get started. I would definitely say search Amazon if you're waiting for a canvas from China. Uh, there are obviously a couple of different companies you can buy from, but my recommendation for Amazon stores would be Cotart, or, and I don't think Star or sells on Amazon anymore. She used to, but now she has her own website, uh, so it comes out of China and it does take a little bit to get to you but if you're looking for something quick fast and in a hurry check out your local craft store like Joann's or Michael's they usually will have some diamond dots in there or you can get it off Amazon with Prime there's a couple of stores on Amazon that sell diamond paintings my go-to would be Cotart uh, do just watch because I know Cotart has had one image that was stolen but I haven't seen that image on their site since I let them know that it was a stolen image they were very quick to take it off the site so uh Find a good diamond painting company you like. Uh, three, never start with Diamond Art Club as your starter company. Now, you guys know I'm a big Diamond Art Club fan. I do not make it a secret. Um, diamond Art Club has some of the best quality out there on the market. You know, just just stating, you know, my opinion on that. Uh, you may not agree, but that's my opinion. Anyways, um, but find a... Try out a, a couple of different companies. Try it out. Try out pour glue. Try out. Um, try out poured glue, mounted glue, and double sided adhesive to find out which one you like best. Uh, double sided adhesive is like, uh, and I have videos on all this stuff. Double sided adhesive is literally just double sided tape put onto a canvas where you can drill on it. Uh, mounted glue is what Treasure Studios Arts uses, and then pour glue is. What companies like DIY Moonshot, Mystical Diamond Art, Cotart, uh, Craftably. Uh, the, the, there's a lot of companies out there that do use port glue. Try all of them to see which one you like best. So what? We got find a good company. Uh, don't buy all the things right away because you won't need them. Find yourself a good cover minder and a good pen. And then uh, my last tip would probably be... Get yourself a nice setup area to diamond paint because uh, if you're going to be diamond painting, if you have small children in your house, you want to put a, make sure there's a spot in the house that's dedicated just for your crafting um, so that they don't get into it or try to keep them out of it. Uh, so yeah, that, that would be my tips for a newbie. Um, 
just find a couple try out a couple of different places don't just buy because people say they're the best try out a couple of different places because everybody has different experiences with all the companies there are people out there that don't like the diy moonshot there are people out there that don't like diamond art club there's people out there that don't like treasure studios arts there's places there's people out there that don't like a lot of, every company is going to have haters and so at the end of the day, it's up to you to make up your mind whether or not you want to try out a company to see how your experience is. You could have the absolute best experience with the company and somebody else can have a garbage experience and you won't know unless you try them out. So be open to trying new companies. Um, so that would be my suggestions to you. If you have anything particular in mind wise for uh, a newbie question, feel free to message me. Uh, my content, my contact information is always down in the description box of my videos where you can contact me via my business page on Facebook, Instagram, or through email. So, yeah, so if there's anything particular in mind that you wanted to know, uh, please feel free to contact me and I will try to answer your question the best that I can. So, thank you so much for that, Jenny. Um, next one is from Ross Beasley. She asks, how do you stop static when you're, you, you have a multi-place? I've tried all sorts of wax, different trays, no problem with the drills with single placing. Please help. So with static, what you want to do is you want to get yourself a dryer sheet. Use it like a little grenade. You take and cut off a little piece of the dryer sheet and throw it into the drills. Um, you can also take a dryer sheet and use that to rub on the multi-placer. You can use it to rub on the inside of your tray uh, just to keep the static situation at bay. Just dryer sheets. Dryer sheets are multi-purpose in this craft for a number of different things. And one of them is uh, keeping static away from your drills and such. Because you will get drills that have static and stuff on them. It's not a big deal. But uh, you can always use uh, dryer sheets or the downy unstoppable little ball pebbles. You can use those as well to put in and stop the static. You can also rub your tray down with a dryer sheet and your pins. I've never heard of the pins and stuff having static. Usually it's the drills. But if you do happen to have static in a pin or something, uh, try using a dryer sheet to rub the pin down and the, the, the tray. And that should help you out. And I think, yeah, I'm pretty sure I, or I left you a comment on that one. So thank you so much, Ross Beasley, for your question. Uh, the next one is from Aries Chicky 88 Hi, I love your, your videos. Thank you. DP-related question. If I put a diamond painting release paper... On a large canvas will it stay rolled up will it stay rolled up I'm still newish to this you mean if you put release papers on your kit and you roll it up will it stay like that yes um, non DP related question what made your you move to North Dakota and why did Minna stay in Pennsylvania I'm sorry if this is too personal or if you've answered it before don't worry I get this question all the time so I got this yeah this this gets into the personal stuff, but I will answer your question. Um, what made me move to North Dakota was uh, about seven, eight years ago, my husband was offered a job, or a friend of his told him about a job here in North Dakota. And he came up to seek out this job because it was making more money than we could have ever dreamed of. And so he moved out here, but we didn't have the money at the time. We were very poor uh, when we had the kids and the kids were still babies at this time and uh, he wanted to give us a better life so he moved himself out here to North Dakota. He lived here for five years and then we decided we've had enough of staying apart because we had only been married for six, seven years or we had only been married for a couple of years um, before he moved out here. He essentially spent half of our marriage out living by himself in North Dakota and he was tired of being alone. So he, we finally got the money up together to move us from Pennsylvania to North Dakota. Now, for those of folks who don't know and are new to my channel, Minna has a different father. So Mr. Coffee is not Minna's father. That is her stepdad, or for her sake, that's her Jordan. Um, Minna has her own family from her dad's side in Pennsylvania, including some of my family, like my pop, my dad and my mom that still live in Pennsylvania up until, well, they'll, they'll be living there for a couple more weeks and then they're moving to Alabama. But for the most part, she still has her father's parents and all his siblings and, and cousins and stuff that live in Pennsylvania. And Minna's grandfather died a couple of years ago from cancer. And her grandmother, who helped me raise Minna because her dad worked a lot. So her 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 his parents were very helpful in helping me raise Minna. And 
be able to work again and have them babysit Minna because who better to babysit than the grandparents? And when her grandfather died, she saw that her grandmother was very lonely and sad because she was alone. So Minna decided that she wanted to stay to make sure that her grandmother was not lonely. Uh, that is the reason why Minna stays in Pennsylvania is because she just wants to make sure her grandmother is okay. And I didn't have a problem with that, see, especially seeing as how his family has always treated me like family, even after we split up. Um, and my family is the same with him. They still treat him as if he's family because he still is family. Uh, just because him and I didn't work out doesn't make him any less family because we do have a child together. So uh, him and I talked about it. We talked about it with her. We talked about it with Mr. Coffee and Mr. Co um, with Mina's dad's spouse. We all came to the the arrangement that she had a valid reason for wanting to stay. So we allowed her to stay. And now she just comes up to visit for a month over the summer. And then she goes back. Um, she knows that at any point in time, if she ever wants to move out here, she is more than welcome to. But for right now, she stays in Pennsylvania with her, with her dad and her grandmother because she just wants to make sure her grandmother is not lonely. So that is the reason for those folks that wonder why Minna stays far away. That is the reason why Minna stays far away, because she just wants to take care of her grandmother. And if you've ever been to a point where you've been lonely and you just wanted your family to come visit you, that's essentially what Minna's doing for her grandmother. She stays up most of her time with her grandmother and taking, helping her do stuff around her house and helping her take care of herself. And it's not like her grandmother's like old to the point where she can't take care of herself because she is very feisty for her age and she can very much take care of herself. But Minna just wants to make sure she's not lonely. So that's why Minna stays in Pennsylvania. So thank you so much, Aries Chicky 88 for your question. Because that's actually a question I get asked a lot. I think it just comes with the stigma of if your child doesn't live with you, obviously you did something wrong. Which in my case, we don't go through the courts for custody of Minna. Minna makes up her own mind where she wants to go. And as long as it's not anywhere dangerous or what have you, Minna's been making her life choices since she was about six years old. And unless she, and there are times where we're like, yeah, no, that's not the right decision, boo-boo. We're not going to let you do that. But for the most part, we let her make her own decisions because in life, she's going to have to make her own decisions when she gets out of the house, like when she, you know, turns adult and goes away. So we, we try to have her make decisions that are, how do I say this? We try to make her have, we, we, we let her have decisions that are appropriate for her age. Um, her not moving was a decision her father and I came to an agreement on because of the reasoning why she wanted to stay. So that, yeah, that, I think that's that's a good thing. So thank you so much for your question. So the next one comes from Sarah Reynolds. What is your favorite crochet hook stitch slash hook size? Ooh, crochet question. Um, Favorite crochet uh, stitch is half double crochet. Love half double crochet. Favorite hook size, 5.5 millimeter all day. All day. Love me a 5.5 millimeter. Um, for those folks that think I don't crochet anymore, I very much do crochet. I do still work for the Happily Hooked magazine doing pattern testing. I haven't pattern tested since Minna's been home, but I still do do crocheting on the side whenever I'm not diamond painting or cross stitching or what have you. Um, so yeah, so those will be my favorites. As for DP, what's your favorite DP company on Amazon? On Amazon, my favorite DP company is Cotart. They have poured blue. They have great canvases. Uh, their customer service is great. I've never had an issue with them. Love Cotart. Cotart would be my number one pick for Amazon stores. Um, so thank you very much, Sarah, for your question. The next one comes from Bella. Bella the Beast. What is your? What is the biggest square you have completed? Hmm. 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 What? No, that was around. Um, biggest square completed? I don't know. I, that is honestly a really good question. I have no clue. Ooh. Was it, uh, I think it might have been Island Time by Diamond Art Club, and I don't remember the dimensions of Island Time, but it was a pretty decent sized canvas, and it was a square. Um, I want to say it was that canvas. It was either that canvas or Into Wonderland, which is another Diamond Art Club. Um... But honestly, I don't know. When I finish this one, this one be, will be my biggest square to date. But other than that, that's a hard one. I don't I don't know. I think it has to either be a tie between Island Time or End of Wonderland from Diamond Art Club. And if, matter of fact, let's check the sizes on that. Okay, so Island Time is a 55 by 74. End of Wonderland is a 51 by 71, I think. So Island Time would be my biggest square I've finished to date. So 
there was, I had to go look it up, y'all, because my brain, I can't remember the size of the, every painting I've done, so I had to go look that up. How many paintings have you completed? I have to be getting close to 100 now, because I believe I've completed 40 last year and 40 the year before that. I do have videos at the end of the year. Each year, I do do a, a time lapse of all the, the paintings I completed that year, which this year, I'm slacking so hard, you guys. Oh, my God. I don't think I've completed 10 this year yet. But, uh... I do have a video telling you how many I've completed. I believe my first year on YouTube, I completed 44. The next year, I believe I've completed 43 or 44. Um, I'm getting, I have to be getting close to 100 canvases I've completed so far. Um, how long have you been diamond painting for? I've been diamond painting since 08. Nope, lied. 18. 2018 is when I first started, I believe. Was it 2018? I think it was 2018. July of 2018 is when I got my first canvas, I think. So, what, two, three years? Um, so that would answer that question. So thank you, Bella the Beast, for your question. Our next question comes from Olivia Williams. I have learned so much from watching your videos. If you have a canvas that's not tacky, if you're giving it to someone, do you need to seal it? Yes. Because if it's not tacky and the drills won't stay on, you don't want to give it to them and the drills fall off, so you definitely want to seal it. Do you cut fold back the sides for framing or trim them off. Depends on what type of framing you're doing. If you're doing a stretch canvas, you will have to cut your canvas. If you're doing stretcher bars, you will not have to cut your canvas. So it just depends on the type of framing that you are doing. If you're putting it into a frame, more likely you might have to trim off those edges. I usually will trim off my edges just because I don't feel the need to have them. If it's going to be in a frame, I'm not going to be able to see them anyways. So yes, thank you so much, Olivia. The next one comes from Danielle Cochran. She goes, what got you into diamond painting. Do you have a favorite painting that you've completed? Uh, again, the favorite painting would be uh, K. Rico Siren and uh, K. Rico Siren and Free Like a Bird from Diamond Art Club. One's a JoJo's Arts, one's a Manny Manzano. Um, what got me into diamond painting is I literally just saw an ad on Facebook one day, thought it was kind of cool, thought I wanted to try it out. So I ordered my first diamond painting off Amazon it wasn't the best quality. The drills sucked really bad. I didn't know any any better. I completed it in like five days and I was like, okay, I need another one. Um, and that was a 30 by 40 square. And I started, my 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 love for square started on my very first canvas because it was a square. Uh, my first round drill diamond painting was my Four Seasons tree from Diamond Art Club because I only ordered squares at that time. So yeah. But that's what got me into diamond painting was I just randomly saw an ad, thought I'd try it out, and boom, here I am on YouTube. Hello! <laughs> so thank you, Danielle, for your question. The next one comes from Work of Hearts Designs. Well, hello. Do you alternate between right start... Oh, whoa, okay, hold on. My, my brain just went... <clears throat> do you alternate between straight top and diagonal top square diamonds, or do you place them as you lay them? What, what does that even mean? Do you alternate between top and diagonal top square diamond? Do y'all read these questions before y'all send them to me? I don't know what that means. What do you mean do I alternate between start top? It literally says, do you alternate between start top and diagonal top square diamonds? That makes absolutely no sense. I can't even process what she's trying to ask. Or do you place them as you lay them in the tray? What? Okay, um... I don't know what you're asking there. Um, I'm guessing it has something to do with the way I lay my diamonds in a tray. I just lay them however I, I, I... That doesn't make any sense to me. I'm so confused. Like, am I not... Am I just not getting this? Or, like, is that not confusing? Um, if you talk about how I start my canvases, I, I usually always start from the bottom right because I'm right-handed mostly. And so that I can lean on the canvas without getting my arm stuck in the glue and creating a non-tacky spot, I start from the bottom right. If you're talking about how I get my drills out of the tray, I just pick them out of the tray. I'm not sure if that's a there, there's no strategic there's no strategy in getting your drills out of the tray. You just you just get them out of the tray. So I'm not sure what exactly you're trying to ask, but uh yeah, I just I just pick drills out of the tray. There's no strategy to getting them out of there. I just get them out of there. Um so thank you so much for your question, maybe. I don't I, I, I still I'm lost. Next question. Mole gore. Hello. 
why did you move to where you are now? Because my husband was working here for five years by himself and he wanted his family to move up here with him and that's why we moved. And do you like it better than where you were? Yes. I grew up and lived in New York and my first 30 years, I moved to VA in 1993 and have no desire to move to live in New York ever again. Um, yes, I moved to, to North Dakota because my husband was working here. Um, he worked here, like I said, he worked here for five years before we moved. Um, and we decided it was time to get the family back together. He was making enough, enough money that we could afford to move us out. So we moved out. Um, no, I would never go back and live in Pennsylvania just because, uh, I realized how bad it was when I moved here, how bad I was living. Um, not like, you know, I was living bad because we were poor, but just racism was very, a normal thing that I would have to deal with. Like, it's sad to say, but I got used to being called racist names and such in Pennsylvania that it doesn't even affect me anymore. Like, I can hear racist terms. and I'm just like, eh, whatever, I don't care. Um, it's sad to say, but it's true. Um, no, not all, of course, the town that I lived in was racist, but there was a lot of racist incidents that did happen. And no, I have no desire to move back there. I didn't want to move to Pennsylvania in the first place. I'm glad I did because I obviously wouldn't have met Mr. Coffee. But I have, I've never really wanted to live in Pennsylvania. I'm not yet, no. So thank you so much for that question. The next one is Sharon Dunk. If you ever are, if you are going to store finished diamond paintings in a book, how would you, would you steal it first? What, what do you mean? Okay, what do you mean in a book? You mean like Stitcherisa does with her scrapbooking? It depends. Um, a lot of the canvases that I do aren't big enough to put in a book. You can put them in a portfolio, but they're not big enough to fit in a book. But if you're doing like snack size paintings and you want to put them in a portfolio, if they're in a portfolio and there's something covering it, then why why would you need to seal? Okay, so my big thing on sealing is I rarely ever seal diamond painting. I don't. I I don't call me lazy. Call me whatever. I don't. I don't really seal diamond paintings, um, unless I'm showing you guys how to seal them. And if you guys want to seal them and want me to do a video on it. I will seal them. But that's usually the only time I've ever sealed a diamond painting. Any other time, I've never sealed a diamond painting. So I don't I don't feel in the need because I've had diamond paintings up on my wall for at least three years almost. And none of the diamonds have come off. So I don't usually seal my diamond paintings. But if you're going to be putting it into a book, I don't see why you would need to. Unless you're going to have some little kid or something looking at the book, possibly picking all the diamonds off. I don't feel the need to, to seal it. So I think you should be safe if you put it in a book. And and, you're, and and I don't know what type of book you're talking about. Are you talking about like a photo album book with a plastic cover? Or are you talking about like a book, like a scrapbook where you just put the four corners in the side? Uh, there, I, I'm not sure what kind of book you're talking about. But I personally am not one of the, I'm not big on sealing my diamond paintings. So probably I, I personally wouldn't seal my diamond paintings. So thank you, Sharon Dunk, for your question. The next one comes from Stephanie Myers. One, did you write Twilight? Asking for a friend. Um, Stephanie asks, how long have you been diamond painting and what was your first one? So I'm going to try to remember to add a picture in here. My first... Sorry about that. Apparently I was trying to get something off my phone and I stopped the video. My first diamond painting was from Jolly Life. It was a fairy. It sits right behind me. Um how long have I been diamond painting for about two or three years thank you so much for your channel watching your videos each day makes me feel like I'm talking with a friend you are so valuable to our community oh well thank you Stephanie I greatly appreciate it again did you write Twilight asking for myself anyways next question comes from Olivia again Olivia has another question she goes I watched your video on multi-placers it seems I can multi-place horizontally and but not straight up and down I don't get them straight I guess I need more practice yes if you are having issues Getting your drills straight when you're multi-placing. Uh, the only thing you really can do is to continue to practice doing it. Because the more you do it, the more you gain that, what Rachel loves to talk about, the muscle memory. You gain that muscle memory and then it's like nothing when you are doing it. So I definitely would say keep practicing and you'll get it. Oh, I thought that was it. Okay, so we have a couple more questions. Martha says, what are your top five places to get diamond paintings? Please and thank you. Have a great weekend. Now, if you didn't know... In my group, Crafters Anonymous, or, or sorry, not my group. In our group, Crafters Anonymous with Miss Crochet and Coffee and Rachel Ray. Yes, I share a group with Rachel Ray. Um, in our group, if you go down to files, in the file section of uh, the group, I do have what my f uh, favorite diamond plate, 
what my favorite places to buy diamond paintings are. Um, so I have my top 10 in the document or in the file section of the group. And when you go in there, all you have to do is click on the file and it'll tell you what my, my favorite places are. So I'll actually do you one better. I'll give you my top 10 places I like to get diamond paintings. And these are not in any particular order. So please like, you know, yeah. Of course, number one is going to be Diamond Art Club. I got DIY Moon Shop, Craftably, Star Ore, Mystical Diamond Art, Cotart, Diamond Dots, Crystal Canvas Art, Every Moment on AliExpress, and Everyday E-Deals for those people that like to save a dollar. So, those are my favorite 10. Again, they are Everyday E-Deals, Ever Moment, Crystal Canvas Art, Diamond Dots, Cotart, Mystical Diamond Art, Star Ore, Craftably, DIY Moon Shop, and Diamond Art Club. Those are my 10 favorite places to buy my diamond paintings. So thank you so much for your question, Martha. I greatly appreciate it. Next one comes from Take Me to Your Lido. I'm thinking it's supposed to be like leader. Okie dokie. What are your top five overall that best diamond painting? Y'all, <laughs> I swear. <laughs> okay, I just answered that one and I answered it twice. I actually said them forward and backwards. So those are my favorite 10. So there you go. That That's my favorite 10. Diamond painting companies. What are the least expensive but still have great overall experience? Everyday e-deals. Um, everyday e-deals. Uh, uh, I, I don't remember what company it was that I had no mords for, but I don't suggest them. But everyday e-deals is a company that I haven't, I've, there, there are, Good canvases, you just have to watch for copyrighted canvases and you have to watch uh, your drills because some of them don't come with DMC codes. But I do like buying from Everyday E-Deals because they are a really good company. So there's that. Um, so thank you. Oh, nope, more questions. Do you know of a good Diamond Art Club monthly subscription box? No, I do not. If not, have you ever thought about asking one of the big companies to get one started? No, I have not. I am not into subscription boxes i'll explain why i think when diamond art club first started they were thinking about doing a subscription box and i know the company easy whim i believe does the subscription box i'm not into subscription boxes because of the fact that i don't know what i'm getting my biggest fear in life like what gives me anxiety which is really dumb but hear me out here is getting something that i don't like so if i did a mystery box and i got something and the painting wasn't something i would necessarily jive with then I'm stuck with something that I don't like. So I don't like the idea of a subscription box, to be honest, because then what? If that, if, for the paintings I want, I just buy that particular painting. I don't need a whole subscription box. So I'm not a big fan of the subscription box idea. So no, I have never thought about asking a company for subscription boxes. Plus, like I said, I think there is a company that does do a subscription box. And I just, I don't like the idea of not knowing what's coming in it. I'd r rather just pick out one by one instead of having a monthly box come to my house every month with a canvas that I may or may not like. So I'm very particular with the canvases that I do get. So yet, yeah, no, I am not a big fan of the subscription box. But thank you. And if you do have a, a company that you think that should do a subscription box, you should contact them and let them know that you are wondering if they have ever thought about doing a subscription box. Um, a lot of the companies will talk to you and tell you, you know, hey, yeah, that might be something we do in the future or no, that is not something we're looking to do at this time. So if there is a company that you're looking to get a certain, to get into making subscription boxes, contact them, let them know, hey, look, I, I want a subscription box. You, you doing subscription boxes? The worst that they can do is tell you no. So thank you so much for your question. Take me to Yolito. Um, hold up, I'll make sure there's no more. Oh, okay. What is your favorite movie? Twilight. Do you like scary movies? No. If you, if so, what's your favorite franchise? I don't like scary movies, but if I had to guess a favorite movie, I like, I don't like the scary movies that are coming out now. Back in the day when there was Freddy Krueger and Child's Play, I loved those movies. Those were my favorite. So uh, Freddy Krueger movie would be, of course, my favorite if I had to pick a scary movie. Mainly, mostly because I watched them when I was younger, when I like, I don't know, when I was like Minna's age and younger, like so like 14 and down. I absolutely love Freddy Krueger. I don't know why, but I just loved him. Just, I don't know, something about like creeping into your dreams and killing you in your sleep. Just that, that made my day. And again, I told you, Miss Coffee has a little bit of a dark side. I don't usually show this side on the channel because usually <laughs> it's not a side you guys want to see. 
But I do love Freddy Krueger. I do love Child's Play. The idea that your doll comes to life and tries to murder you is just an idea I've always had since I was little. And I was like, oh my God, it's a movie. This little doll is trying to murder his his, his little kid is hilarious. Not murdering kills kids is hilarious, but the, the movie. Um, but I do like those two movies. Other than that, uh, another... I, I, don't, I don't really watch scary movies too often to be like, ooh, this one's my favorite. It's just not my thing. Um, like... Final Destination, I will never get behind a log truck ever again. Like, my brain, the way my brain works, I, I I can't watch scary movies because my brain makes me think that it's real and that something like that could possibly happen to me. So I just try not to watch scary movies. But thank you. Thank you. Look forward to hearing your replies. Thank you, Br- Brenda. Oh, well, thank you, Brenda. So yeah, Twilight is my favorite movie. If you don't know, Sparkly, Sparkly Vampires, yes, I do like them. Don't be hating on my favorite movie, okay? Uh, do I like scary movies? No, I don't. But if I did have to pick, I'd have to say Freddy Krueger was my favorite. Um, so the next question comes from Diamond Painting Dreamer. What's up, Dreamer? How did you, how did you and your husband meet? From a mutual friend. Um, we met through a mutual friend and we have been together like glue ever since. Like I said, it's not a big romantic story. Literally, it was just kind of like, hey, hey, you want to ride on this guy's back? Um, we were at a friend's house. Like I said, we got together with a friend. He drank a beer and passed out. And then me and Mr. Coffee rode on his back with Sharpies. And then him and I became friends ever since. And he was dating somebody at the time. I was still with Minna's dad. Uh, Minna's dad and I split up and him and his girlfriend split up. And then him and I got together and we've been together ever since. We're like magnets for some reason. I don't know why. We don't... We, we don't we don't mind being away from each other, but we don't do well away from each other for long periods of time. We learned that in the five years that he lived up here. We don't like being away from each other, so we have been stuck like glued to each other since the day that we uh, met at my friend's house, So uh, which we called him Roscoe Chicken and Waffles. But we've been stuck like glue ever since, so yeah, that, that's how I met Mr. Coffee. So thank you, Dreamer, for your question. Jennifer asked, when will the glue dry on my pick after I'm finished? What? Um, huh? <laughs> Wait, what do you mean? When will, what glue? Do you mean the glue on the canvas? Because it's already, it should be already dry when you're, you're placing your drills. Um, if you talk about sealing your diamond painting, that time will vary depending on where you have it sitting to dry. So I hope that answers. Oh, hold up. I did reply to that one. There's another... Do the glue on the canvas dry after you get done with the picture? Oh, 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 okay, okay. Uh, no, the glue's already dry. So it's not like it needs to set or anything to dry. It, it's already dry. Uh, the glue, if, if you happen to get glue, like, from Diamond Art Club, because this has happened to me quite a few times. If you get a Diamond Art Club and, say, your drills slide, like they're doing the cha-cha slide on your canvas, that's when you want to leave that section open and let, it's going to do something called curing. The, the, the glue essentially gets harder but it's not less tacky um so if the drills are sliding you're going to want to let it cure and then use the drills but uh the glue doesn't need to dry so there you, i hope that answered your question so thank you jennifer for your question bonnie says i keep hearing you say you're colorblind yes ma'am um i am red green colorblind no it does not affect me diamond painting because i know that's a question i get asked all the time besides the fact that people go oh then what color is this i, I i'm not a dog okay let me explain this i'm not a dog I can see colors. I just don't see all of them correctly. Um, it does not affect me being able to diamond paint or craft in any sort of way. For anything I do have trouble with, I always can ask my family and they will tell me what color is what or if something is matching or it doesn't or if I'm putting the wrong drill on the canvas. Um, have I thought about getting the Enchroma glasses? No, I have not. I don't see myself as broken. Obviously, I was made the way I was made. And if it was something that was a dire emergency, then yes, I would get it fixed. But me being colorblind, no, I don't want to get it fixed. I have no intentions on getting it fixed. No, I have never thought about getting the Enchroma glasses. I'm not, I don't feel like I need to be fixed. And I feel like people so badly want to fix me. And I've had probably uh, up to four or five people actually try to send me glasses that were equivalent of the chroma glasses and where I do greatly appreciate you guys wanting me to see the colors correctly. I like seeing things the way I do because I'm used to it. It doesn't bother me. So like I try to live with it and deal with it. Plus I do have a son who is colorblind and my father and my biological mother are both colorblind. And yes, it is very rare for women to be colorblind. Um, So 
that might answer the rest of her question. So let's see. Are you just joking? No, I'm not. <laughs> I am not joking. Like this, here, okay, perfect example. This here, to you guys, I think this is supposed to be green. To me, this kind of looks beige. This doesn't look like a color, really. Um, sometimes reds look like greens. Sometimes greens look like reds. Um, but for the most part, it just looks like all the brightness was sucked out of the image. So that's essentially what it looks like to me. Um, or are you really colorblind? Yes, I'm, I promise you I'm really... I get that a lot. People are like, if you're really colorblind, then how can you... I don't really know how to explain it to people. Because I don't know how you see things versus how I see things. And I feel that the way I see things is correct. So when people tell me something is incorrect, I have to ingrain that in my mind that that is not that color. No, it does not hinder me driving or doing anything of the sort. It's just how I was made. Um, if so, how can you do DP? I have started memorizing the DMC code list and the colors that correspond with them. So like I can tell you that 550 is a deep plum color. And I can tell you that 666, which is my favorite DMC color, but I cannot see it. You guys see a very vibrant, bright red. I don't. I see an orangey beige color. But I know the fact that it's supposed to be a bright red and the, the meaning behind it like makes people uneasy. And that's why I always say it's my favorite. I'm a very demented person, I guess. I don't know. But I, yes, I am really colorblind. No, it does not affect me seeing diamond painting colors or anything. Plus, essentially... I don't worry about the color so much as I do the symbol, which is why it's a big deal for me to have the symbol be clear because if I can't get a clear symbol, then I can't work on it because I will mix up colors, which has happened before in the past. Um, I mean, yeah, the symbols, but still, I hear you talk about colors like when you got the new rainbow pen. Explain yourself, please. Okay, so like when I got the new rainbow pen and I was explaining the colors, what you guys didn't see is... I do a thing called movie magic. So, okay, you see this? You see how it's in my hand? See how it's not in my hand anymore? Movie magic, right? Oh, it's back in my hand. So that is called what I like to call movie magic. All that is for those folks that are wondering and want to, you know, figure out how I do that. I literally just pause the recording and do movie magic. <laughs> so with that said, I do a lot of pausing in my videos. You just can't tell. And the reason why they seem so seamless is because they're, it's paused. I will pause the video, do what I need to do, and then come back. So if there is a color that I can't tell what it is, I will pause the video, ask one of my children or my husband, and then come back, and you guys are none the wiser because I pause the video. Um, a lot of the times if I see something like this where I know it's rainbow, uh, Maggie will give me a thumbs up because she loves rainbow. So she sees me unboxing something and she gives me a thumbs up, I automatically know it's rainbow colored. Um, when it comes to rainbows, I know for the most part, I know what colors are in the rainbow. Um, just like I know for the most part, most of the DMC code numbers. So it's not hard for me. I just have to work twice as hard to get things down than everybody else. And I have no problem with that because I've been doing it my whole life. I found out when I was about mm, five or six years old that I was colorblind. Um, Orion found out when he's about five or six years old that he is blue gray colorblind like my dad. And I'm red green colorblind like my mother. Um, so there, there's my explaining myself. So thank you, Bonnie, for your question. The next one comes from Mark. Your videos are so informative. I watch your videos to gain knowledge so that I can help my wife when she does her diamond painting. Oh, that's so sweet. Through watching your videos and some of your YouTube from friends, Rachel, etc., I have learned and now have bought my wife a light pad size. I'm going to guess I meant he meant A3 because he put B3. Clip on light clip on magnifying glass with light, handmade acrylic pens, several storage solutions currently saving up for the Elizabeth War set, an adjustable top draw drafting table, and got some everlasting tips on the way, and also some patty wax on the way. Does she need anything else that she could possibly help her? I know finding it hard to choose her kit. If I left it to my wife, she would look First look at the price, then the kit, and she never makes her mind up. Any advice, please? <laughs> Your wife sounds like a lovely, lovely lady. Um, she's, she's, a, she's a woman after her own heart because I'm the same way. I will look at a price and go, I don't need it that much. Um, <laughs> um, make sure she has a big tray. Like, and by big tray, I mean the tray like I have here. You see the big tray? Now, there are companies out there that do like the, the different shape trays and, you know, the, the whatever trays. 
uh, the big trays like this or my other favorite, which I refuse to use it because I don't want to mess it up or break it, is the tray I got from uh, my good friend, Mama Vapes and Diamond Paints. Uh, she got this tray for me. I refuse to use it because I'm scared I'm going to break it, but uh, it has my name on it. It comes from Etsy. I will link the seller of these down below. I will also link where you can get one of these down below. Um, the big trays are a must when you're diamond painting just because it holds more drills. And if you're working on a bigger project, you're going to want to be able to have more drills out because you're going to want less time of trying to fill your drill tray up than anything else. But for the most part, it sounds like she has everything she, she needs to... It sounds like you're doing an amazing job. I'm pretty sure you're... you're as much as she's a lucky lady, you're a lucky man because uh, most men don't do that for their wives. So I... Uh, my tip, my hat to you, sir. <laughs> so thank you, Mark, for your question. But yeah, I would say definitely get her a big tray. She should be happy with what she has now, and she should be able to diamond paint with no issues at all. Um, you got her the light patch. She has a drafting table, the pens, the everlasting tips, uh, the storage solutions. The only thing that you didn't mention that you did uh, that I do suggest is a big tray. Um, other than that, she sounds like she's good to go. So have at it, and you guys have fun. Thank you so much for your question. The next question comes from Fiona. Hi, could you explain the adverts within your videos? The adverts? Oh, the ads. Okay, yeah. Somebody asked me, or Fiona asked, would I explain the ads in my video? So randomly when you're watching my videos, it'll either cut me off in the middle of a sentence or right before I show you guys something and it goes to an ad. Now, a lot of the times I'm lazy and I don't place the ads. I let YouTube place the ads. I am able to place the ads, but for the most part, I let YouTube do it because they, they will literally place them in spots that there's a gap in me talking. So if I stop here, YouTube will more than likely put an ad in there because there's a dead space and they fill it with the ad. Uh, watching the videos, yes, it does help, but you only need to watch like the first like 30 seconds of it or something. Five, It's between 5 to 30 seconds of it. So when that skip button comes up, feel free to hit the skip button. You don't have to watch the entire ad, I promise. I usually tell people, especially when I do whipping chats, if you see an ad pop up, uh, that is the, usually in, in, in whipping chats in my lives, I strategically place the ads every couple of minutes because when you're diamond painting, if you're anything like me, when I get into the zone, I don't want to stop. So what do I do? I keep diamond painting. And then I, after a couple of hours, I get up and I'm sore and I'm like, oh my God, my bones hurt. To keep yourself from being stagnant and sitting for so long, I literally place them. When I do place them, I place them strategically so that every 15 minutes you can get up, go to the bathroom, get a drink, move around, get yourself moving, and then you can sit back down after that ad plays, and then you can get back to diamond painting. For the most part, though, for most of my videos, I just let YouTube do it, and they usually put like two or three videos or ads in the videos. Uh, but yes, you are more than welcome to skip the ads, but I... In, in longer videos, I will place them every couple of minutes so that you, it kind of a reminder to get up and move around so that you're not sitting at the table for hours and hours and hours because that is not good on your back, your eyes, or your legs to be sitting for that long period of time. So I will strategically place them in spots where you guys can get up, leave the ad rolling so you're not missing anything, go get yourself something to drink, go to the bathroom, you know, walk your dogs if you have to, and you know exactly where your spot is when you come back. Watching the ads does help YouTube creators. So if you see a YouTube creator that is uh, monetized, which means we have a thousand, we have a thousand subscribers and over four thousand watch minutes, uh, you will see ads in your in their videos. If they are monetized, helping them by watching the ads is a lot to them. Believe me, a lot of people don't uh, don't realize that when you're monetized. Uh, Watching those ads does help. It's obviously not necessary. You can, you don't have to if you don't want to, but it does help the creator. We do get a couple of cents for every time you watch an ad for, you know, like I said, I think it's like five to 30 seconds or something, but it does help the creator and it does help, you know, give us income so that we can buy bigger and better kits for you guys to see and more craft supplies and what have you. So yes, it does help. Um, and she mentioned the one about flowers is killing her. And I'm like, I don't blame you. That one absolutely drives me nuts. Now, I've been, okay, there has been times where I've been watching an ad. And the ad is so cool that I'll forget. Like, I've been, what was it, two weeks ago, I was went to go get into Jeremy. Uh, that's J, Jeremy JMTJ Crafts. I went to go get into his live. And there was an ad on for Purple. Now, the two commercials that always get me on YouTube, Purple and Sasquatch. 
the the soap. Anytime I see those commercials, I can't help but watch the entire commercial. I sat there for 20 minutes watching ads on Jeremy's channel. And then I went, oh crap, I'm supposed to be watching Jeremy. <laughs> so yes, watching the ads does help, but it's, it's not necessary. So there you go. Thank you so much, Fiona, for your question. Um, and she had a couple of replies. Let me see if it's going to refresh or is that my last question? I think that might be my last question, y'all. So yes, that was the last question. So thank you to everyone who asked questions. I think the major question was, what is my favorite diamond painting company? Would I design a diamond painting? And honestly, you guys, I'm not really interested in designing a diamond painting. Um, I, I'm not really into owning a company. That's just, it's just not my thing. Um, meeting Mr. Coffee, it just happened to be, okay, it, it happened to be by chance because he was born in California. I was born in Washington State. We both moved from the West Coast to the East Coast. He lived in New York. I lived in South Carolina. Uh, the same year that I moved to, I moved to Pennsylvania when I was 16. He moved to Pennsylvania when he was 13. And then we met like three or four years later. I don't remember how, I don't remember how old I was when I first met Mr. Coffee, but we moved P Pennsylvania with, like literally within a week of each other. And we met maybe two or three years after uh, we had moved. And that's how we met. It, it it was just by chance we happened to meet this way. And like I said, we've been stuck like glue to each other ever since. Um, don't get me wrong. Our relationship is not perfect. It is not all rainbow unicorn farts and rainbows. No, no, no. We have our problems, but we always tend to work them out. Uh, meeting was just a chance encounter. I met him. He was a really cool guy. I thought he was really cute. And I was just like, yeah, I want that. And Miss Coffee gets what she wants. <laughs> so yeah, and then proposal wise, I know I, I know a lot of people are just like, oh, I bet he got down on one knee. No, literally laying in bed and he was just like, you want to get married? I was like, okay, why wait? Then we got married. Um, the sweetest thing that he did do though, he did ask for my dad's hand, uh, to, my dad's blessing for us to get married. And of course my dad was like, sure. And now like him and my dad and uh, Mena's dad are like all the best of friends. So yes. Uh, diamond painting companies again if you want to know what my diamond painting companies are if you missed that in the video uh again if you go over to the group crafters anonymous with crochet and coffee and rachel ray it is always linked down below uh if you go over to the group in the file section i do have a bunch of videos linked there and i also have my top 10 favorite companies i like to buy from so you can always access that information there but with that said folks I think this is a long enough whipping chat. I should probably let you guys go. I've been rambling long enough. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for entering in your questions. Next week, I think we should be back to a normal whipping chat because Minna's leaving next week. Um, so please bear with me because I'm going to be a whole ball of emotions. Um, so that is it for me today, folks. Thank you so much for helping me complete a little bit more on my canvas. I'm probably going to fill in these little bit of spots here. And then I'm going to call it quits for this for right now because I probably should go check on the kids. But thank you guys so much for watching and, and, and answer, asking me questions. I do greatly appreciate it. If you're new to the channel and would like to see more random crazy videos just like this, please feel free to hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified anytime I randomly decide to put up a video. And believe me, it's random. But with that said, folks, I really must bid you adieu. But not before reminding you, like I always try to, wash your hands, don't touch your face, stay six feet away from each other, and always try to be kind. Be courteous, be cool. Bye guys.